I'm Professor Graham Yorston, and today I'm going to be talking about one of the most bizarre medical conditions ever described, tarantism, or the compulsion to dance wildly in a trance-like state in response to a bite from a tarantula. I'm joined today by one of my colleagues, Martin Gale, who has brought along one of his friends. Can't say I'm entirely comfortable sitting so close to a big tarantula, but I'm going to do my best to get through this. Outbreaks of dancing mania unconnected to tarantulas plagued Europe for more than four centuries, but I want to focus on the dreaded dance of the spider bite. Islamic physicians, including Avicenna and Razes, discussed tarantula bites and what to do about them. One cure involved smelling human excrement and sitting in a hot oven to sweat out the poison. But the first description of what we might recognise as tarantism was by the 11th century Italian physician Gary Pontus, who called it antenismus. It remained a subject of fascination for doctors throughout the Middle Ages and into the early modern era, and hundreds of papers and entire books were devoted to the subject. In the 15th century, the Italian scholar Niccolò Perotti said in his Encyclopedia of the Classical World that those bitten by the tarantula would become stupefied, but at the sound of music, they would start jumping and dancing. A hundred years later, the physician Pietro Mattioli gave a more detailed description of the variety of ways in which the spider bite could affect people. Some sing, others dance, weep, cry out or sleep. Vomiting is common. Some patients jump and dance, while others sweat and tremble. Some are in continual fear, while some are delirious, distraught, or behave like maniacs. It was most common in the southern province of Puglia, around the ancient city of Taranto, which is where it gets its name. This was the hottest and most underdeveloped region of Italy, where centuries of deforestation had spawned a plague of spiders in the dusty soil. The spider in question is the wolf spider. It does have venom, but it is not particularly toxic to humans, and its bite is no more painful than a bee sting. Martin, can you tell us a little bit about the friend you've brought along today? Yes, this is a Burgundy Goliath bird-eating tarantula, and its Latin name is Therophosa sturmi. And where's that native to? This particular tarantula is native to Guyana and South America, Brazil, all around the Amazon rainforest, so mainly a South American tarantula. So nowhere near southern Italy then. What is the spider that's found in southern Italy? So the spider that we find in southern Italy is actually the true tarantula and it's called a tarantula wolf spider, but it is a separate family. It's from the Lycosa spider family as opposed to these spiders which are the Therophosid family. It's a completely different family of spider. So totally different then. But what would a bite from an Italian tarantula actually feel like? Yes, the bite from a tarantula wolf spider is believed to be, be no worse than a wasp sting. And how likely are they actually to bite people? Well, the likelihood of actually being bitten by a tarantula wolf spider is minimal. They're quite small spiders, very skittish, and they're more likely to run away than try to actively bite anyone. Part of the tarantism mythology is that the spiders would bite the earlobe of peasants who were having a post-lunch nap on the ground after a morning's hard work on the land. Or the genitalia of adolescent girls lifting up their skirts to urinate in the long grass. In reality, Italian wolf spiders rarely bite unless they are continually provoked. The folklore said that the area bitten would turn yellow, sometimes black, and appear swollen and inflamed. Then, anything from an hour to several days later, the person would feel excruciating pain and numbness in their extremities and develop a high fever, shortness of breath, and a weak pulse. They might be pale or flushed or go blue or even turn black. Some passed out, others became stupefied and barely moved. Others were agitated and noisy. Many complained of headache or said that their bones ached as if they were broken. And some said they were seized with lethargy. Sometimes the onset was sudden, sometimes slow. 
The attacks varied, with some victims so morbidly excited that they would sing or laugh and dance continually and be unable to sleep. Others would leap into the air, uttering wild cries, or hurl themselves to the ground, arching their bodies in grotesque convulsions. Yet others would be dejected and weepy. Some would avoid people and seek seclusion. Others would seek out crowds. Many liked being tossed in the air, rocked in cradles, placed in swings, or being hit on the soles of their feet, while a few would strike themselves over and over again. Some would dance in the heat and call for swords and mirrors to flash, while others would toll the funeral bell, gnash their teeth, howl, tear their hair, or roll in the dirt. Many writers alluded to the sexual character of the disease, with those affected throwing off their clothes, dancing, shouting out obscenities, or even having rampant sex in plain sight. Although the cause was originally thought to be the bite of a spider, people could also be affected by touching or even just seeing others who had been bitten, especially if they themselves had been bitten in the past. Part of the mythology was that the bite could never be fully cured while the spider that inflicted it or its offspring remained alive. Tarantism occurred sporadically in single cases, but also in mass outbreaks with most people in a village being affected. However, it only occurred in the hottest months of the year and was especially common around the feast day of Saints Peter and Paul on the 29th of June. Dancing was both a symptom of the condition and a cure, but everyone agreed that if you had been bitten, your only hope was to engage in frenzied dancing or face certain death. Over time, Dancing also became a way of protecting yourself against the condition, and particular churches developed a cult around this. One of these was in the small town of Galantina, where the Apostle St Paul is said to have stopped on his way to Rome. He was offered hospitality by a noble family, and in return he gave them a magic well, to cure maladies inflicted by poisonous animals. The well is still there, and for centuries, victims of Tarantism and those wishing to protect themselves would come to Galatina to drink from the miraculous well, visit the nearby chapel and perform the spider dance. In the 1960s, the church condemned the rituals as the dancers could get uncomfortably raunchy and the well into which the victims had to spit back the water they drank contaminated at least as many people as it cured. The chapel and the palazzo in which it was located fell into disrepair and was closed off to the public for many years. But the recent resurgence of interest in Tarantism led to a restoration and reopening and once again musicians and dancers flocked to Galatina on the 29th of June to play the traditional songs, wave the red scarves that ward off the spiders and dance the Tarantella. Even at the height of the dancing plague, however, not everyone was convinced the strange behaviour had anything to do with spiders. The poet Giovanni Pontano in 1491 thought the whole thing was no more than an excuse for the women of Puglia to engage in lustfulness and shameful acts at harvest time. And Domenico Cirillo, a professor of medicine in Naples, noted entomologist or insect expert and fellow of the Royal Society of London, wrote that the surprising cure of the bite of the tarantula by music has not the least truth in it. It is only an invention of the people who want to get a little money by dancing. Outbreaks of dancing mania unconnected to spider bites occurred in many European countries between the 13th and 17th centuries, as well as Persia, Ethiopia and the Americas. These sometimes led to people dancing themselves to death or to disasters such as the collapse of a bridge across the River Meuse in Maastricht in 1278, which plunged over 200 dancers into the murky waters, many of whom drowned. In Germany in 1237, a large group of children danced 12 miles between two towns in a trance, twirling and leaping all the way. And it has been suggested that this may be the origin for the Pied Piper of Hamelin legend. The music that evolved as a cure for the spider bite illness in Italy was called the Tarantella, and musicians composing and playing the tunes were regarded more as healers than entertainers. The music is a quick, lively tune with short, repetitive phrases played with increasing tempo. 
the accompanying lyrics were often suggestive or downright sexually explicit. In 1817, Francesco Cancellieri, in his exhaustive treatise on Tarantism, describes the restorative effects of music. We found the miserable peasant oppressed by difficult breathing, and also observed that his face and hands had begun to turn black. And because his evil was known to all, a guitar was brought, whose harmony immediately began to move first the feet, shortly afterwards the legs. He knelt up, then after a short interval he got up and walked. In the space of a quarter of an hour he would leap three palms off the ground. He sighed, but with such great emotion that it brought terror to those around him. And before an hour the black was gone from his hands and from his face. Other cures that were suggested included a brisk ride in the morning, presumably on a horse, alcohol and love. Spiritual or physical is not clear. It was also thought advisable to tie a ligature if a limb was bitten to contain the poison and ensure recovery. And many believed that cloths warmed and moistened in wine and wrapped around the naked body were also beneficial. Many sufferers craved water, either to drink or to immerse themselves in. The gentle murmur of falling water was considered an effective remedy. Some dipped boughs or vines in water and moved them as they danced, while others would spend hours watching the movement of the sea until they lost themselves in contemplation, became overwhelmed and rushed headlong to the waves and drowned. Some physicians were of the opinion that it was beneficial to blister the feet and bathe them in warm water. Others thought the only remedy was to scarify the area, cup it and paint it with a mixture of treacle and bruised garlic. Italian anthropologist Ernesto Di Mattino led a multidisciplinary investigation into the phenomenon published in 1961 and concluded that Tarantism was a cultural construction of the rural society of Puglia. Many different theories have been proposed to explain the outbreaks over the years, from demonic possession, sunstroke, rabies, ergot or contaminated rye poisoning, or just plain drunkenness. Most modern writers consider it to be a form of mass hysteria, nowadays termed mass psychogenic disorder. There are lots of examples of mass psychogenic disorder, both contemporary and historical, from the demonic possession of nuns in Loudun in France in the 17th century, which forms the basis of Ken Russell's film The Devils, to the bizarre epidemic of laughing that broke out in East African schoolchildren in 1962. Most incidents of mass psychogenic illness occur within closed, cohesive social settings – schools, factories, convents and hospitals. Episodes typically begin with a single individual exhibiting a variety of ambiguous somatic complaints, which often appear dramatic, such as fainting or hyperventilation, which causes intense anxiety in other group members or observers. Incidents may last anything from a few hours to several years. However. Sociologist Robert Bartholomew has questioned whether it is correct to talk of disorders and diagnoses and suggests that episodes may involve normal, rational people who possess unfamiliar conduct codes, worldviews and political agendas that differ significantly from those of Western medically trained investigators who judge these behaviours independent of their local context and meanings. Which I think means it's just people doing their own thing. But why should this small area of Italy have been more affected than anywhere else? The spiders are widespread throughout southern Europe. One theory is that it is a throwback to the boozy and licentious cults of Bacchus and Sibylle that had been followed for centuries in Puglia, as it had been colonised by the Bronze Age Mycenaean Greeks. When the Bacchanalian rites were suppressed by the Roman Senate in 186 BC for being too scandalous, even by Roman standards, they went underground, reappearing under the guise of emergency therapy for bite victims. It seems to me that many factors were probably at play rather than there being a single cause, given that it affected people in such a wide variety of ways. Some cases may have had a genuine organic cause such as sunstroke or ergot poisoning, and some people may have had an allergic reaction to a tarantula or scorpion bite. 
but the response to music and dancing can really have no other explanation than hysteria. One historian summed it up by saying, it is true to say that it affects the hysterical, the melancholic, the depressed, the frustrated, the neurotic, and the mentally deranged, as well as those leading solitary lives, while the bored, the beggars, the malingerers, the rogues, and the swindlers are also vulnerable. Whatever the cause, this condition and its cure, the Tarantella, have certainly influenced our global imagination. Dozens of composers have turned their hand to writing music for the dance. It is a key theme in Henrik Ibsen's proto-feminist play, A Doll's House, and the Tarantellagra spell appears in the Harry Potter books, causing uncontrollable jerking and twitching in the legs of the person against whom it has been cast. There is a band called Tarantism, and it has even spread to K-pop. So that's the thing with mass hysteria. It's very infectious. But I'm pleased to say I've survived my encounter with this particular Goliath without having to roll around on the floor or start dancing. So thank you, Martin. Thank you, Therophosa Sturmy. And thank you for watching at home. Please subscribe and click the notifications bell if you want to be kept up to date with all the latest videos. I'll see you next time.